My name is Jordan Rogus, and I am a senior technical consultant here at GlideFast Consulting. And today I'm going to briefly discuss and demo playbooks within ServiceNow. Before I dive into playbooks, please note that the UI you are viewing is slightly different than what you might be used to with UI 16. And that is because this is the next experience UI that is available with the San Diego release of ServiceNow that I've installed in my personal development instance. So what are playbooks? Playbooks are a way to visualize a flow in one view to facilitate an easy and intuitive user experience. To help you understand this, let me walk you through an example playbook I've set up in the context of customer service management to facilitate the intake, fulfillment, and closure of a case. So we are gonna do this in the CSM FSM configurable workspace. So let me go there. And once we are here, I need to go to a list of cases. So I'll go to my lists, go to all the lists, go to cases, and I will create a new case with no information populated and submit the case record. So let's save this. Once this is saved, you're gonna see a new related item that appears next to the details tab here, and it'll be called playbook. This playbook tab will only appear if there's an active playbook running on the current record. Give me a second, this is taking one or two seconds to actually see. So we do see the playbook tab here once this case record was submitted. And if we go to the playbook tab, we can see that the name of the flow the playbook is visualizing is here. It is called CSM Fulfillment. And there are a couple sections, Intake, Fulfillment, and Resolution. These sections are called lanes and help organize the flow. You can expand and collapse to see the specific activities within each lane where each activity represents a piece of the flow. Each activity can be configured to show different information on the card, and there's additional customizations that can be even done, such as creating buttons on the card to do client actions or to run server scripts. So expanding this intake lane, I see four activities. I'm already taken to the second activity. This playbook has recognized the first activity is completed already. By clicking on the completed activity, I can see what was done showing the traceability of a playbook for previous tasks, as well as future tasks that will be occurring in the process. This first automated activity was to initially assign the case to an assignment group. The next activity was to, the next activity pulls up a couple of fields from the form and asks the fulfiller to validate or populate them. So let me assign this to Amy, update the priority. I'm okay with the assignment group. So let me update this. So once submitted, the activity is marked complete, and we move on to a wait condition in the third activity, where the process will pause until a specific condition is met. In this example, that is waiting until the case is assigned to a user. Let me go ahead and go to the case record and assign it to myself. It's important to note that the playbook will automatically progress once the assignment is made. You do not need to be on the playbook tab for this update to occur. We can see that by going back into the playbook. Going back to the playbook tab, we can see that, the, that this activity is completed and the following automated marked case as open activity is also completed. We can see that the case record itself has been moved to a state of open. With a check mark next to the intake lane, we can see that the process has progressed to fulfillment. Expanding the fulfillment lane, we can see two activities. The first being an automated activity, which is complete, that created a task associated to the case for fulfillment. And the second activity being where we are right now, waiting for that fulfillment task to be closed. Let me go ahead and close that task. So if I go to the related lists of tasks, we can see that this task was created via the playbook. I jump into it. I'm going to mark it as closed. And similarly, this will progress the playbook. So let me go back to the playbook tab. And we can we have now progressed to the final lane, resolution. 
Before I look at the activities in the resolution lane, let me show you the filter functionality that playbooks provide that can help you uh, filter down the list of activities. By clicking this funnel icon, you can filter the cards by the status of the cards or even the assignments. In this case, we can filter for all the complete activities, the in progress activities, any of the activities assigned to me. So let's go back and look at the one last activity in the resolution lane. And it is an instruction activity to remind the user to resolve this specific case. I can mark this activity as complete and then go to the case and resolve it to end this process. As you can see, by marking that activity as complete, the entire playbook has now been completed. Let's go back to the case and close it. I will need to set a resolution code, add a note, and then propose the solution. While that is proposing, um, hopefully from this demo, you can see that having a fulfiller follow-up playbook can create a consistent fulfillment process to support your service teams. There's much more you can do with playbooks from showing KB articles within them to having only certain activities appear at certain times based on conditions. And then from the fulfiller perspective, the benefits of leveraging playbook include providing fulfillers more transparency with the process by allowing them to see what future steps they might need to take to complete their task. Please note that playbooks are only configured to run using workspace. However, they can be configured to run in either a base workspace such as agent workspace or a now experienced workspace such as the CSM FSM configurable workspace, which you just saw in this quick demo. So now that we've seen playbooks and discussed how they can be valuable, how are they configured? Playbooks are the visualization of a process. The way to develop the process is with Process Automation Designer. Let me go ahead and pull up Process Automation Designer. Process Automation Designer is just another way to configure a flow and service now, such as Workflow Editor or Flow Designer. The difference is only a flow configured in Process Automation Designer can be visualized via a playbook. In this video, I will not go too deep into the configuration of a flow in Process Automation Designer. Rather, I will provide some highlights. In the description of this video are some links to help you get started with Process Automation Designer. We are seeing that the process that we just saw in the demo is loading up and here it is. So what is Process Automation Designer? It is really a collection of activities that make up a flow. The flow is triggered similarly to Flow Designer. In this example, the trigger was set to run only for when the case was created. The lanes in PAD, or Process Automation Designer, help organize your flow and provide visual separation within the playbook as seen earlier. We can see intake, fulfillment, and resolution here. And you can add more and you can get to condition these lanes to run at different points. The activities that make up these lanes um, can either be out of the box activities that ServiceNow provides. We can see a list of them here, some interactive or non-interactive activities or you can create new activities, which in essence use uh, actions or subflows created in Flow Designer to tell the activity what to do. Once a pad flow is configured, you can test it and then activate it. And once activated, the flow will run when triggered. Please note that if running the pad for customer service management as seen in this short demo, it should already be configured to visualize the playbook in workspace. Granted, the appropriate playbook for CSM plugin is activated and note that this plugin might come with a fee. But if running pad on a separate application, please check if a plugin is available. If there's no plugin available or you're trying to run it for a custom app application, additional configuration might be required, which is also linked below. And this would allow the playbook tab to appear within workspace. Thank you for watching.